Alright guys, it's HMK and I've got a very special guest here, my good friend Skyward Wing and we're here for Hectic Sky Alright man, so our first video that we're gonna do together which we're splitting onto two different channels is where we're gonna talk about what lies beyond the Keyblade War the Kingdom Hearts 4 story possibilities The thing about the Kingdom Hearts 3, oh, you know, we don't even know what's gonna happen in Kingdom Hearts 3 so jumping ahead to Kingdom Hearts 4 is a big step so try to not take these too seriously but you know try and keep these in mind in case any of them really do come true right all of these what we're talking about is heavily theoretical so you know take that in mind the first thing I like to talk about with my good friend Sky the great possibility of a new enemy coming into contact with the Kingdom Hearts cast and that is the extremist purifier saga now think about this at the end of Kingdom Hearts 3, the opposition has always been darkness, you know, we've always been going against people of the darkness, abusing the darkness. Now let's say if Xehanort and his 13 Seekers of Darkness were to fall in battle, a new enemy could arise, don't you think? Yeah, I do think that. Uh, one made of pure light, not just darkness, not darkness at all. He actually, he or she actually very much hates the darkness and wants to eliminate it completely. That's why I'm thinking about extremist purifiers, you know, key bladers of light that seek to purify all the worlds and destroy the darkness completely. And not only darkness, just to destroy everything that they don't seem, they, that, that doesn't seem pure or doesn't seem good. You know, they want to make a perfect world in each world. The problem with this is that light and darkness must coexist for each to exist. If one is overweighing the other, then there's a, you know, there's not a balance in the scale. And you know, that can lead to very massive problems for both light and darkness. If there's no light, there's no darkness, no darkness, no light. So that could be the problem. And now we do know from the fact after Kingdom Hearts 3, Sora is going to be the main protagonist. Uh, they have said that, uh, Nomura said that a while back. I don't remember, I'm not sure when. But he did say that Sora is going to be the main protagonist. So he's probably going to be the one having to deal with this extremist purifier. Right, and that's going to be a very interesting take because Sora has always, you know, fought and used light as a weapon. He always talks about how light is good, how he fights for the light constantly. Now to go against an enemy that uses the light and potentially having Sora to fight for the darkness, that would be a very, very interesting spin in the next saga of Kingdom Hearts, don't you think? I do, I do. Alright, so, and, you know, with every new enemy, there has to be a new foot soldier. Now, in the past, we've had nobodies, heartless, and unversed. Now, all of those enemies had some sort of negative annotation, like heartless, no bodies, and unversed. So, what I'm thinking is a new enemy called Malshines. What do you think about that? Malshines? I wonder why you came up with that one. Malshine. Right. Why um, you know came up with that is mal usually comes from the word malevolent or you know bad and mal is Spanish for bad. So let's take like you know um bad light or bad energy and that's why we would come up with you know some things that are malevolent embodiments of light. Interesting. Very yeah, I would I would like to see that and how they would like to uh, you know go against these. Are these adorable creatures? Are these uh, like very um, evil looking like creatures, if that makes any sense. Uh, you know, ah, Sora's gonna end up fighting like pixies or, or fairies and right. stuff like that. I'll, it'll be very interesting <laughs> if they start off all cute and stuff, and then Sora's like, aww, and he goes up to one and turns into this nasty looking bug shit. And I'm like, damn. <laughs> that, that would be fun. Damn, yo, put that in a notebook, somebody. Alright. Okay, so moving on. Our next take, our next theory on what could happen after Kingdom Hearts 3 is the Vanitas Saga. Uh, and for, you know, I just like to say for record is that I pronounce Vanitas Vanitas, which is the way they pronounce it in Japan. No vanitas. 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 So if you guys are going to get pissed off about pronunciation, whatever. How do you pronounce it? I I say Vanitas. I never played any of the Final Mix or Japanese games, so I just listened to the oh. English dub. So Vanitas has always been that way, yeah. So. Alright, so you say Vanitas, I say Vanitas. Tomato, tomato, whatever. Let's go. Alright, so at the end of Kingdom Hearts uh, 3, it's very possible that when when and if Xehanort gets struck down, Vanitas could take over the 13 Seekers of Darkness or whatever's left of them. Wow, well, actually what I think might happen 
is towards the end of Kingdom Hearts 3, Vanitas might end up striking down Master Zeno. If you really think about it, Vanitas, uh, his heart is pure darkness extracted from Ventus. Like, he probably has no morality, no type of going. When he sees that Master Zeno is weak, he might use that opportunity to take him down for himself. Yeah, you know, it's a very, like, wh who's that, uh, like, a Decepticon mentality, uh, star screaming against uh, Megatron. But, uh, yeah, I would totally see that happening because in the manga and even in the game, Vanitas harbors some deep hatred to Zay towards Xehanort, even though he, you know, follows him as his master. Vanitas does not like Xehanort at all. So, but it's very likely um, if Vanitas were to take over Xehanort's army, it's because, you know, throughout the game and in the manga, he has this sense of fulfillment that he has to carry out. And it seems himself that he was mesmerized by the Keyblade War in Birth by Sleep. So, you know, it's very likely that he may want to continue his master's work, even though he hates him. Considering he has been probably the only person to actually own the, like, own the X-Blade throughout the entire series, the one that will open Kingdom Hearts, uh, Xehanort hasn't touched it at all. Right. It's always been Vanitas, so he might end up taking him down with that, like the power of Kingdom Hearts and the X-Blade. Uh, considering he is to wield it, and we don't know what happened to Vanitas. Apparently he was destroyed, but at the same time, so was Ventus. So when Ventus wakes up, so does Vanitas. So we'll see how that plays out right, it's, in Kingdom Hearts 3. It's very possible, and they did hint it in Dream Drop Distance, where uh, young Xehanort told uh, Sora that he's not even the prisoner, you know, even though he has someone prisoned in his heart, and he's not the prisoner. Vanitas, or Vanitas, was standing next to young Xehanort. So it's very possible that young Xehanort may have either taken uh, Vinitas from the past before he was destroyed since he likes to time travel and all that jazz or like you said Vinitas wakes up along with Ventus which is a very very you know dark thing to think of that's the whole thing when they alright the Kingdom Hearts story has always been kind of confusing but as right. soon as they added time travel I was just like oh my god what? that's that's I, I, I was lost right I, I totally feel when they explain their way of time travel I'm like No. So all the plot holes, right? Every single one. So we know that Kingdom Hearts Three, Tetsuya Nomura and Mayor, you know, writers, developers said that all the questions in the past would be answered in Kingdom Hearts Three, and I'm good with that, you know. But everyone's like, well, if they have more questions, as long as there are questions and mysteries that go forward and not go back, I am good with that. So uh, yeah, like. The only question I want to have at the end of Kingdom Hearts 3 is what happens next. Exactly. That's all I want to And I, I am just so hyped for this. I can't... <sighs> the teasing. It's going to be some Soon. sort of hardcore teasing at the end of the game. Soon. Soon. It's, it's, it's we'll, we'll probably see more of it at E3, so I'm looking forward to that. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to that. I mean, we got some stuff. We got a little bit of stuff from Famatsu and Jump Fiesta. Uh, Jump Festa not too long ago, but I'm really looking forward to Kingdom Hearts 3 at E3 2014. So, thank you guys for joining us on our takes of, you know, what can happen beyond the Keyblade War. And if you want more takes on this, go check out Skyward Wings channel because we're going to have another video of more takes on what can happen after the Keyblade War, what can happen in Kingdom Hearts 4. Thanks for watching. Alright guys, so I've been HMK, and once again everyone welcome and thank my good friend and guest, Skyward Wing. So until the next video, we have been Hectic Sky and we'll check you guys later.